Matt Whitaker, former U.S. Acting Attorney General. This is such a big conversation about America, our future, what's going to save our republic. We have a great football player. Matt Whitaker is here. Matt. They tried to bury me. They didn't realize I was a C. It's a touchdown. Whitaker. Former Acting U.S. Attorney General. Under President Trump. I'm going to be an unwavering supporter of law enforcement. Welcome to Liberty and Justice with your host, Matt Whitaker. Welcome to CPAC Now. I'm your host, Matt Whitaker. Good to be back. We're here live at CPAC, day two. My guest is Dave Sunday. Dave is the York County, Pennsylvania elected district attorney. Yes. And he's a good friend of mine. I don't want to tell you this, but he's a terrible golfer, so just be careful. Thankfully, <laughs> he spends more time putting bad guys in jail than he does at the driving range. Yes. Dave, I'm glad you're Yeah, I'm glad you're here. It's great to be here. It's good to see you, my friend. Great to be here. Thank you for having me. Yeah, so uh, uh, obviously you can't uh, be in law enforcement and not know that now every state's a border state, right? Every state's a border state. York County's being affected by the same things that, you know, places in Texas and elsewhere. Tell me me, uh, how we we deal with the threats. Tell me how we... um, what you're seeing, you know, I, I mean, you're yep. you just run such an innovative office there. Uh, you've been reelected by the people of York uh, as a reward for doing a good job. Talk to me about what you're doing there. Well, I think to start with, you know, we started our battle with the opioid epidemic in 2014. Mm-hmm. And that's important to understand because, you know, through that process, we because necessity is a mother of invention. Yeah. And when you have a product coming from far, far away that we can't impact, we have to figure out what to do. And so we realized right away, we had to do everything we could to impact the demand, okay? So we started a, a nonprofit, we work with families, we go into schools, we teach kids like, like the old school uh, D.A.R.E. program, like don't do yeah. drugs. Um, we teach them about what opioids are and, and why they should stay away from them. Um, and then on the supply side, again, because we're stuck within the boundaries of York County, um, further out in the state to some extent, depending upon who we're working with. Yeah. Um, but we came down hard on traffickers because you have to attack the, uh, the supply side as well. And so we utilize in Pennsylvania a crime called um, drug delivery resulting in death. It's a felony of the first degree, carries a maximum sentence of 20 to 40 years. And that's for an individual who um, is selling, uh, at the time, heroin and that heroin then goes into the market and kills someone. Okay, so back, which is often happens, which unfortunately ha- it happens every day. Yeah, every day. And so, so we want to be thoughtful about this. So we go after the traffickers. We do everything we can to put them out of business. On the other end, we do everything we can to help people get treatment. You know, and and that brings us to where we're at now. And what has happened now is this. Before I came here, actually yesterday, I sat down with a group of, of undercover uh, drug cops that I work with in, every day in my county. And I said, what are you guys seeing as of right now, today? And they said, we are seeing fentanyl pure by itself. We're seeing meth filled with fentanyl. We're seeing powder cocaine filled with fentanyl. Um, and we're seeing uh, pressed pills because they're finding pressed pill makers so people are manufacturing these pressed pills, and that is all throughout the street. It's everywhere. And so it's to the point where the, the, the mistake that might be made results in instant death. And for all the work that we've done up to this point, and we've seen great returns on that, uh, we try to view it as innovative, right? Yeah. You gotta hit, you gotta go after the people that need to be gone after and help the people that need help. That being said, when the game keeps shifting on us, Matt, yeah. and that's, this is what happens, the game keeps shifting from a place far, far away. The one constant in this entire battle that we've been waging is the fact that that constant change is taking place across our border yeah. in a place far away that we have absolutely no control over whatsoever. But what I see is, and I'm telling you probably in here, 90% of the people in here, it's impacted their lives, it's impacted mine for sure, is that you have an entire generation that know nothing but suffering from addiction. 
well, you have an entire generation, and when someone becomes addicted, okay, that first time, and people, and so I asked, I asked the police officers, I said, well, why would these dealers put fentanyl in yeah. things and make it more deadly? Two reasons. Number one, you are inadvertently getting people addicted to fentanyl. Number two, you're creating a situation where, um, unfortunately, sometimes when people die, users that increases will, the business for yes, the drug dealer. Yes, users will be attracted to yeah. that. Okay. So with all that being said, th the devastation that has been caused by the the poison that has been dumped into our country is is unquantifiable. And I say that because, you know, you watch a child. I know you have children. I have a two year old son. And I couldn't even live if I had to see him start using and using and changing and becoming someone else because it's so insidious. It doesn't happen overnight right. where you lose the person that was your loved one and they become someone else with the ultimate knowledge that death will come. And that's a type of of almost torture that that this is doing to us in our right. community. Right. And and I I'm, and I only put it in that framework because what I think has happened sometimes, Matt, is when the numbers keep coming, yeah. people start to kind of like, they start to, the numbers don't have the same impact. Yeah. 100,000 overdose deaths, you know, is, is unfathomable in the first place. And so every year uh, when, we, when that number is hit or, you know, we're going, we're going to go north of that most right. likely, it, yeah, it's, it's hard to quantify, it's hard to explain. And unless you've been directly affected by it, you know, it's, yep. you know, it's, hard, to, it's hard to imagine. And, and, and you're seeing um, a severe mental health crisis that's occurring with people that have co-occurring disorders. Um, you have a severe mental health crisis with loved ones who are dealing with it. And, and it just goes on and on. I mean, the opportunity cost from this yeah. is, is something that we will, as society, be fighting for generations. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, we probably... Um, you know, could talk forever. I mean, as former, as I'm a former prosecutor, your current prosecutor, I know that there are just the the issues are 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 unbelievable. Um, what do you what do you see? You know, uh, Pennsylvania is controlled by the left. Your governor, your attorney general, uh, both left wingers. Uh, you know, kind of what what kind, what's that doing to the state? Is it eroding the rule of law? Is it eroding um, you know sort of people's faith that the, that that there's a fair a fairness? Well, we live in a world right now where people's faith has been shake ha, has been shaken towards um, towards police and prosecutors, and, and it's something that that has that has not been there's not been a rebound to that, yep. and that all went back in 2020, um, and so we had our at the time uh, we had our our Democrat governor Tom Wolf, we had our Democrat Attorney General Josh Shapiro, who's now the governor, oh, the governor. and during that time period, police and prosecutors were under a daily attack yep. that has yet to cease to the point where we ha it's become next to impossible to find new police officers, to find people that want to go into public service. Um, I'm blessed in my office. Uh, right now we have a robust team of prosecutors, yeah. uh, but a lot of offices can't find prosecutors. It's to the point where kids are coming out of law school viewing their career and they say, I want to do what's right. I want to be a, not a prosecutor. Yeah. And, and although it's the best job in the world, the best and job I would in encourage the recent yeah. law grads to, yeah. the first job the, should be in a local prosecutor's in office. Yeah. The best right. job in the world. Exactly. And so, so, so the damage was caused in a lot of different means. Now we're at a place where we have fewer people to do those jobs. We have more fentanyl coming in. We have violent crime going up in large cities and you have these woke prosecutors in places like Philadelphia, okay? Mm -hmm. and, and, and the true harm of that is, goes way beyond yeah. just what we see in that city. I mean, the amount of trauma on, on the children that have to live in that war zone is, is shameful. Yeah. But, but, you know, it's like the Commonwealth is like a human body. That's an organ, and that's an organ that's, that's going bad. And it impacts every single one of us. Right. Every that's a good one of point. Us. That's a good point. Well, so rumor has it that um, you may be considering uh, elevating your office to attorney general. I know you can't talk about that right now. You haven't announced, and I'm sure you're prayerfully considering with your family and with a two-year-old 
I'm sure it's, you know, it's like you don't know about the timing, but mm -hmm. uh, as a friend and as someone that, you know, we've known each other for years now, mostly we, we met through CPAC. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I just think you should, you know, you have a real talent and, and uh, I think a real upside. So I want to encourage you, you know, I've, I've run for public office. I encourage everyone to run for public office. You've, right, won, right. you've won elections for public office. Mm -hmm. So. If that happens, we'll have you back on the show. How's that, Dave? I appreciate it. Thank right, you man. so much, Dave man. Dave Sunday. It was great to be Your here. Thank you so much. No, my pleasure.